AppSettings.json is used to save a configuration value so an ASP.NET Core web app can read it. This is part one of our AppSettings.json course and we'll have a look at how to read from the AppSettings.json file for ASP.NET Core. Remember to hit the red subscribe button or go to youtube.com slash round the code to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Learn .NET, Dependency Injection and Blazor WebAssembly with Round the Code's online courses. Go to roundthecode.com slash courses. Now viewers familiar with ASP.NET will be familiar with the web.config file. We're going to have a look at the app settings. Now the problem we've got here is that when we set a value, we have to set it as a string. If we want to convert it to a particular type, we have to do that within the application. Now these app settings represent an authentication section. The problem is we can't split it out into a section, we just have to have the section as part of the key. The other issue we've got is that XML adds quite a lot of code. So we've got this app setting section here, we've got an add keyword here, we've got a key and a value attribute. And if we have a lot of these settings, it's going to add to the overall file size. With ASP.NET Core, we have the app settings.json file. As it's a JSON file, we can have different sections like what we've done with the authentication. In addition, if we've got more than one value for a particular key, we can add it as an array. The final thing with this is that we can add different types. So we've got a string, but we can also add things like an integer or a boolean. In program.cs, we can use the configuration as part of the web application builder. To do that, I'm going to read the client secret. So I can call builder.configuration and I can use the get value method. Within that we can add a generic type and this generic type represents the value that we're expecting. So as the client secret is a string we're going to add that as a generic type. Now it's expecting a key parameter. Now what we do with this is we get the section which is authentication, we add that in there, we append a colon and then we get the client secret and add it to that. We're going to run a breakpoint on that and run the application to see if it's outputting the value. So we can see that the client secret string is outputting my secret. And if we go to the app settings, we can see that that represents the same value in the app settings file. Now I'm going to show you how to use the configuration in an ASP.NET Core Web API. Now I've got a home controller. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a private read-only member of type I configuration and call it underscore configuration. Next I'm going to declare a constructor passing in the I configuration as one of the parameters. As the configuration is added to the IOC container as part of the dependency injection it will have the instance as part of that. I'm just going to set the private member to the parameter that we're passing in. Now I'm going to make some modifications to the index and what we're going to do is we're going to read all the app settings and output them as part of the response. We're first going to add the client ID so we call the configuration.getValue expecting a type of string and we call it authentication colon client ID as the key. I'm going to do the same thing for the client secret as well. So we're just going to modify the names. Now for the allowed hosts that's slightly different because it's a string array rather than an actual string. So in order to output a string array we once again use the configuration instance but this time we're going to use get section. Now get section will use the same key format as for the get value. So we're going to change that to allowed hosts. And the final thing we have to do is we have to call the get method. And in that we're expecting a string array. So that's what we add. The final thing we need to do is to add the attempts. Now the attempts is expecting an integer. So we need to change the type for that. So we will rename the names for it. And we're going to change the type to int. With the application running, we can see that we're outputting the values into the response. 
In the next part of our appsettings.json course, we'll have a look at how to add a connection string to app settings so it can be used with Entity Framework and SQL Server. Check out the full course playlist at roundthecode.com slash appsettings course.